Good morning, everybody. I'm Tish Williams, Executive Director of the Hancock County Chamber of Commerce. And today you are joining us for the Voice of Business podcast. And welcome. Um, this is going to be a really informative session today. We're really excited to have the president of the Board of Supervisors, Scotty Adam, along with the president of the Chamber of Commerce, Jason Kenichi. And before we get started, just wanted to provide you with a few housekeeping tips. Um, first of all, at the end of the session, we are going to open this up to questions from the audience. So if you do have questions and you're on Zoom right now, you can just ask your question either by raising your hand or putting your question in the chat box feature. Also, if you're um, watching live on Facebook, uh, we will be going back and forth and you can give us your question in the chat box there and then we will direct that to Scotty and Jason. Jason, of course, is with uh, Kenichi Engineering and Surveying, serving as our president and I will turn it over to Jason now. Jason? Hi, good morning and thank you, Tish. Uh, we're excited to be here again this month with Supervisor Adam. Uh, thank you for your time today to come give us an update on some things that's been happening in the county. Uh, Scotty, as you know, is the board president. He's also the supervisor for District 4. Um, and so this is your serving on your second term, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, so we, um, looking back over the years uh, since you took office, there's been a lot of changes in the county. Um, and a lot of things have taken place with the court system, uh, the hospital. So we really wanted to just to get an update from you on, on how those are going, the transitions from, from a few years ago and, um, and see if there's anything that, uh, you know, that we need to, to be helping you with moving forward. So let's start with the, uh, how about the hospital? Well, uh, Jay, first of all, thanks for having me and uh, it's a pleasure being here, you know, to provide the information with the hospital. Yeah, you know, we entered into, of course, Oshner had a lease prior to the agreement we're in now, but we did a lease purchase, a 25 year lease purchase plan with Oshner that is going pretty well. We just started uh, receiving the annual uh, income from it, which is going to generate about $850,000 a year. And they're also, through the agreement and the lease, required to spend about $500,000 a year on capital improvement. So, that's also a plus and, and they will hopefully come and update us annually on what they're spending their, their what capital improvements they're providing for the hospital. Is that at each, uh, each of their facilities um, or is it specific Spe to? Specific to our facility. Okay. Is what that, the capital improvements are, are in the lease. Have they provided any type of a master plan or anything to the, to the county for review? No, they have not. And I've asked, actually asked just recently, within the last couple of days, I've asked our board attorney to uh, ask them, you know, send a letter requesting them to come provide us with an update on what their plans are and what they're going to be spending, what kind of capital improvements they're going to be making to the facility. So the lease payment that goes to the county, is that specific? Um, are, there, are those funds, uh, are you able to use those for for anything countywide or is it specific yeah. to the facility? No, we they're unobligated funds that we can use at our discretion. Okay. You know, which is over the period of the, the lease, it's gonna be generate over twenty million dollars, you know, about twenty one, twenty two million dollars over the term of the lease, you know, and like I said, with another twelve and a half million in capital improvements. Mm -hmm. So does the county have any responsibility as far as um any type of maintenance or anything, um, or does that all fall on, on Oshner? No, everything falls on Oshner. Okay. So okay. we're, we are out of the hospital business. That sounds like a very good. It was, it was a really good move for us. Yeah. It, was, it was a really good move for Hancock County. You know, now we're making money instead of, you know, instead of it costing us money, the county is just generating revenue from it. Okay. You know, to be used for other reasons. Yeah. You know, whatever we determine, you know, the need. Good. Good. That's uh. That's a lot of good information on the hospital, and I think that's going to be a great partnership moving forward. Yes. All right, let's talk about some more uh, partnerships. What about Pearl River Community College? Well, the, the Pearl River Community College, we broke ground on their on their Aerospace Academy, I think, in 2019. And I, after speaking with Dr. Breerwood of the college, he has informed me that all the funding is in place to move forward. You know, they're just waiting. They have a 26,000 square foot facility that's going to be used for the academy and another 18,000 square foot building on the airport side of the road to be used as a hangar 
and all the funding's in place ready to go. They're hoping to break ground this year. Actually, they're hoping to start construction this year on the hangar part of it, but they're waiting on approval through the Department of Treasury at the federal level is, is the current holdup right now. So, okay. Yeah, that's another facility that'll be um, utilized by the industry out at, at the airport. Yeah. Um, the local high schools can, can send folk, children, you know, students there for cross training and yes, and, and it, offers, it, it offers a whole different, you know, aspect of, you know, opportunity for the kids you know, that one in one to get into the aviation industry mm -hmm. you know hopefully this will provide a, a uh, you know access to that road farm you know yeah and i'd like to mention too that the port and harbor commission has worked with pearl river community college on um the site that they selected and, and helping with the uh the hangar site um and so they've been a great partner as well yeah. throughout the throughout the process yes hopefully we can see some uh some buildings going up this year Okay. How about um, some improvements to the arena and McLeod Park or the sports complex? Well, start, starting with the arena, we're actually uh, doing some maintenance work to the arena right now, doing a lot of needed repairs, you know, to the actual arena that we have now. But we also have a about a $25 million plan, revitalization plan for the arena to hopefully turn it into, to you folks that are familiar with the Neshoba County Fair, to turn it into a venue of that nature to hopefully be used. But for us, they use theirs once a year for us. We we wish to use it year round and have, have plenty of uh, venue. You know, we have a big venue there that's utilized quite often throughout the year already, you know, with the county fair and some music festivals and different things going on, rodeos, you know, and the plan uh, it provides for us to grow the size of the covered arena, add more stalls and more covered area to hopefully draw some bigger rodeos for the, you know, high school kids and college kids, and and then also some stages. You know, hopefully build some stages or purchase some portable stages for music festivals and things of that nature. You know, to have some big entertainment. You know, come to the area. So this this is transformational for Hancock County. You know, it would provide a, a it actually for the whole region because we hopefully, you know, we're in the middle of two regions that are big into the equine industry, which is Texas and Florida. And this gives us, we're right in the, the middle of it and hopefully can create an opportunity for those folks to come here, you know, for those those types of events. It'd be yeah. great to capitalize on that interest. Um, and, and hopefully now that uh, the, the pandemic might be um, easing up a little bit that the concerts can come back and yeah. this festival can come back because that's a great venue. It's a lot of space, easily accessible to, to from New Orleans to Alabama. So um, hopefully we can open that back up. That would be great. And, and there will be, you know, there will be some uh, housing availability out there as well. We have part of the, the property that will be dedicated to allow the building of some little mini houses out there, kind of like they have it in Neshoba. And we have like three or four different plans that you can choose from. You know, so hopefully we get, you know, if we can get the funding for this, you know, the county is committed. We got $1 million and bond money this year from the state to go toward that project. The county has committed up to six million dollars of that, and you know, just towards that project. And if if we can get some additional funds from the state over the next few years, and hopefully have this project fully funded, you know, within the next few years, hopefully before the end of this term for all of us, you know, it'd be nice to see, you know, groundbreaking on this project to get started, and and it, this would be transformational. It'd be a regional venue, not just for Hancock County, but you know people across the coast and throughout the state and the entire southeast to be able to come in which we draw that some of those folks now but i think this would uh cover the entire southeast region you know as a venue yeah you know and years ago uh, was there some discussion about horse racing that to take place at the arena well i think they have some prelim you know i don't know what you call it, preliminary races We're, it's not a certified track i was actually talking to our parks director this morning about this and it's only like five eighths of a mile. So I don't know what the criteria for it to be a permitted track. They would have, have some, just some small races, I guess, mm -hmm. like for the amateur county fair races. and, you know, some amateur stuff, you know, like during the county fair that goes on, but there are, there will be grandstands out there, but hopefully to be able to host some other events, not just horse racing out there, you know, some monster truck events, whatever, you know, types of things that we can draw there, you know, to draw people out to the arena. 
you know, it's all about rebranding it and turning it into a, a multi-use venue, you know, to attract all different types of, of mm -hmm. entertainment. Yeah. You know, so. That would be great if we could get some monster truck racing. Oh, it would be, awesome. be awesome. I think everybody would love it, you know. Yeah. But this would be transformational, you know, economically for Hancock County. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Uh, it'll be interesting to follow how that proceeds and um, track that progress of that of that project. Yes, well, we, and you know, with the CARES Act money that we're supposed to be getting, hopefully, you know, we're getting a lot of requests for the use of that money, but hopefully we can take that money and put it into the arena and to be able to get this project fully funded here in the next couple of years. Okay. You know, and, and McLeod Park, talking about McLeod Park, you know, we're, we've gone and, you know, over the last eight, 10 years, that park has gone from 80, I think 85 sites to like 150 now. Once we finish the expansion, we're, we're actually working on now the second phase of the new the new camping area. You know, we've gone from 85 to 150 campsites and the revenues have gone from 80, like $187,000 a year to over $500,000 a year. And last year and this year, well, the, over the past two years, this park is operated in the black. So it's making money for the county now instead of you know, instead of costing money. So Kevin Kevin Ladner's done a great job running in the park out there. You know, it's been about a little over a million dollars in Tidelands funds and roughly about two million dollars in Go Mesa funds that have been uh, spent out there to upgrade you know, bathroom facilities. You know the access stuff with the boat launches and things of that nature. Yeah, it's a great facility. We we've been out there a couple of times camping on the weekends and. Uh, my children love it. There's a lot to do. They like the nature trails. Uh, we've actually caught some fish out there. So um, it's been, a, it was a great adventure. So it'd be nice to see those improvements take place. It's hard to get in. Yeah, it, it really stays is. stays busy, so yeah. it stays busy. That's true. And um, the uh, new ball complex uh, facility that we have, we completed probably within the last two years, we've completed and has actually started generating a little revenue for us. We have a gentleman that that's has a softball association that we have signed a lease with to use a minimum of two times a month that pay that generates revenue for the county that we hope to continue to put back into this facility to keep upgrading it and and possibly look at some expansions in the future from different types of ball fields i don't know if it'll be flat fields or ball fields but we'll you know we'll look at that and determine what the need is at that time you know the hope is to to generate the interest in a potential hotel because you know, there's people coming from all over the state playing softball out there right now. And hopefully we can generate a little interest in a hotel, whether it be by the interstate or out by the ball field somewhere, you know, to get that access for people to be able to come and stay. Yeah. You know, so that's that's the hope there. Is there, does the county have a marketing plan to try to attract interest to that uh, facility or um, how do y'all, is that fall under the recreational department? Yeah, well, right now it yeah, it does fall under the recreation department. You know, I'm sure it's marketed on our on our webpage and our Facebook, but you know, with this gentleman that's doing the softball tournaments, you know, he's doing a pretty good job marketing it and drawing people from all over the state. Mm -hmm. And and primarily actually the southeast area, you know, cuz in travel ball tournaments it's the it's the girls softball, fast pitch softball, and they team there are teams coming from all over, you know, the coast and the state to come play at that venue. Yeah. It's just sad that we haven't, you know, hopefully one day we'll have a place for them to stay here so they can spend the weekend here and, and, and spend some of their money here. Yeah. Keep them staying yeah. in Hancock County as opposed to keep all the money here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, so let's see. So no, another announcement that came out this past week um, some additional funds, Thailand's funds were announced, Go Mesa funds. Um, Explain the difference between the two and just generally what they can be used for. Uh, I know there's, there's sometimes there's, there's some confusion about why certain money and certain projects happen when other when there could be some other needs in the area. Well, Thailand's money is, is money that we get from the state from uh, bottom land leases. You know, we get from the state um, that we apply for projects when we have projects that we want to apply for. But at Thailand's and Go Mesa money are typically projects that on the water. So that had to do with either, you know, water quality projects or, or things of that boat, or, you know, public access, yeah, you know, which is boat launches and things of that nature. So, but they typically have to be used for that type of stuff mm -hmm. on the water. You know, Go Mesa is, is a Gulf of Mexico Energy Savings Act money. That's offshore leases that we get from the federal government and the county gets a little over a million dollars a year from that. 
And now what we what our plan is for, and we've already started this process. We bonded some of the money, you know, to do a lot of drainage work, and we we actually did a, a water uh, table uh, drainage study. The Wagner engineer did that for us. We spent about three hundred fifty thousand dollars on that, and through that they identified about ninety five projects, you know, drainage project that needed to be done throughout the county, which totals about a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, now we have gone back and started going through to identify some things that can, and this is throughout the entire county, not just in the rural area. This is with all three, Diamond Head, Bay St. Louis, and Waveland, you know, and the rural area of the county. And we're going through now and identifying things that we can do in-house or the cities can do in-house. You know, we're working with all three cities on these, you know, with Diamond Head, Waveland, Bay St. Louis, you know, you're well aware of, we're working with Bay St. Louis on a project here in town you know, trying to get that started, you know, have some beaver issues right now going on one of them we're, we're trying to get rectified and taken care of. Once we get that, we're going to work with the city of Bay St. Louis on getting that project done. You know, we've committed to Diamond Head to match money that they have identified, you know, the projects that they have identified. And I also are going to work with Wave on anything that they come to us for. So. Yeah, I never would have uh, thought that Bay St. Louis had yeah. beaver issue until we started looking into some of these drainage projects. And a lot of people don't understand. We have actually have a beaver control gentleman that takes care of this stuff. Yeah. Us, so. And it's for those that don't know, uh, these beavers are very efficient. Uh, they can rebuild the dam within about a day. So yes. it's not as simple as just you know, uh, removing the dam. You have to relocate the beaver. So, and that's, that's not an easy task. So. Yeah. Well, and we, you know, on the drainage, we have six projects right now that we're fixing to to score the engineering firms, you know, throughout the, this is in the rural areas that uh, we're gonna hopefully award, go out for bid here soon, you know, within the next, you know, couple meetings, we hope, mm -hmm. you know, so that that's six of them just in the rural area. And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna work with all three cities to identify things within the city limits that also need to be done, sure. you know, and work financially with all three. Well, good, those would be some much needed improvements. Yes. Let's change focus a little bit from uh, some environmental uh, questions to our court system. I know this was a huge undertaking by the county a few years ago. Um, Judge Favre has come on board and I think he's done an amazing job, a tremendous job with, with uh, moving that system forward. Uh, give us your thoughts on how that's gone over the past few years. Well, it's actually been, I think, about two years, not even two full years yet since Judge Favre has taken over. I think he went into office. He was appointed by the governor in 2019. You know, the county decided they made the decision to ask the legislature for us, you know, to have the ability to do a county court, go from the youth court referee system to a county court with an appointed, then elected judge. You know, they gave us the approval to do so. And once we did that, you know, our system, we was overwhelmed with the amount of kids in custody with over 400 kids in custody at that time. Currently, we are at 68 kids in custody, which is huge and it's transformational. Judge Trent Favre and his staff have done a wonderful job making sure things are done in the timely manner that they're supposed to be. And Trent, I keep calling him Trent Judge Favre, but he has the compassion and, and the willingness to deal with the situations and, and loves his job and, and enjoys what he's doing. So, and he has made a huge difference to the kids and the families. I've been to his reunification day that he's hosted before, you know, with CASA. And it's unbelievable how highly, even the folks that are having to deal with the situation speak of him, mm -hmm. you know, and the things that he has done to help, you know, the Hancock County. Yeah, it's, it's great to see his leadership in that role. Um, and it's great to have someone from Hancock County that cares about the area. Um, and so it's um, it's interesting to see how that whole system has changed for the better over the past couple of years. Well, in, in talking about that, uh, Judge Favre has just received a, a grant of over $700,000 from the DOJ that's going to allow him to hire counselors and, and people, you know, psychiatrists or whatever at his discretion, you know, to help with the situation and, and help families and kids in need, mm -hmm. you know, that are in the system. So it's looking forward to that as well. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be great for the area moving forward. Um, we want to open up to any questions. If we have any that are uh, available right now, if we have any comments, we've got a few minutes left on the on the session. So, uh, Jason, do we have anybody? 
great, uh, great presentation. I really appreciate this update, Scotty. Also uh, on Zoom right now, we have Supervisor Cody Canan. I wanted to introduce him and see if he would like to say a few words and add anything more to the update. Oh, well, well, thank you, Tish. Um, and look, I don't want to, to overshadow anything here. I think Scott has done a great job. I appreciate him disseminating this information this morning to everybody. Um, but most importantly, you know, a lot of the a lot of things that he's hitting on and some of the highlights and projects, it's just been, we've had a good, a good board. Um, all these efforts have been, you know, collaborative effort. Uh, we have a, a really good relationships with the cities right now, you know, continuing our cogs and things. It's just, it's, it's, it's really um, refreshing to be able to work so closely with everyone to kind of see a lot of these projects come to fruition, uh, you know, without the partnerships that we have in place, um, without the relationships, you know, I think everybody knows it's in the business world. It can make things really difficult. So having these kind of partnerships and relationships, and I know Scott, it can, um, expel on it a little bit, but it's, it, it really does make things a lot easier for us as a county to be successful, you know, when no matter if it's one of our three cities or us, uh, that's, that's creating something or bringing something new, uh, we all enjoy the fruits of that labor. Um, and it means a lot uh, to have this. And I've been really excited and really blessed to, uh, to just be a part of this journey now with this board and, you know, with myself and Teresa coming in as the new supervisors, uh, just trying to build on that momentum that they've taken from their previous administration, uh, you know, a lot of these projects were kind of in the works, you know, especially with the arena projects, just trying to help uh, get that to, to come to a, uh, instead of a, a conversational piece, um, but but actually brick and mortar. Um, so just excited to be a part of these things. And, and like Scott says, a, a, you know, a lot of these projects, you don't really see, you know, it's, an, it's, it's more of an in infrastructure aspect of it, but um, having opportunities like he's had this morning to kind of get this information out just lets people know that, hey, look, there's a lot happening. Um, there's a lot going on and, and just happy to be a part of it. So, again, I, I, that's all I have. Thank you for calling on me, Scotty. Good job. Thank you all for uh, for putting this on this morning. And, and we appreciate everything you all do. Jason, thank you and, and Tish, you as well. Thanks, Cody. And do we have any questions from our audience? And if we do, you can put those in the chat room. And while we wait to see if we do have any questions, Jason Scott. Yeah, I want to respond to Cody. Thank you for that. And and just to let everybody know, Cody it went to Diamond Head Council meeting, you know, this week and give them an update, which we try to do. You know, we constantly working with all three cities, you know, as far as sharing information and working together on different projects. You know, and you know, we've done a lot of road projects with all three cities, um, bridge projects. You know, there's been a lot of collaborative efforts between the three cities and the county. So, and the relationship with all of them have, has been wonderful with our previous board, with the current board. And, um, you know, it, it speaks volumes to the efforts, you know, of everybody and how things are getting done, you know, because without that, I don't think as much would be getting done. So it's nice to see everybody willing to work together you know, to achieve, mm -hmm. everybody has a common goal, you know, so, and it's nice to work together with everyone to be able to achieve that. Yeah, we've, and, and we've that's worked the way on. it should be. And then y'all made that happen. And I congratulate you on that. I have a that's question right. for you, um, Scotty. I know um, the Silver Slipper, you know, with the recent storms that we've had, they've had some issues in getting people to and from the casino. And there's been talk about uh, improving the roadway there. Do you have an update on that? Yes, yes, I do. Tish, we're actually working with Compton Engineering right now to uh, come up with it. They have we have a design, you know, that they're working on for us. And what we're going to do is raise the road. We're going to move it over, more so into the right of way, and raise it to where the water isn't an issue getting in in and out of there. Because you know now with just about every storm, the water comes across the road down there, which causes problems you know, for the Silver Slipper. And they're, they're a big generator of funds for Hancock County. So, you know, we get a lot of game and money for them every year. And so whatever we can do to help with that, we're just waiting on the design to come back and there will be some, probably a little bit of acquisition of property along the right of way, you know, with the two or three property owners, however many we have there. But we're looking forward to that and hopefully have the, the finalized, you know, plan here shortly. So we're well, all working good. on it. Yeah, that will make a huge difference, you know, for the safety of the staff and and yeah. their um, constituents that come to to stay there and to, to 
enjoy the many amenities of the Silver yeah. Slipper. So um, just so everybody knows too, this is um, being, um, we will be downloading this to um, our podcast and you can actually go to Apple, Google and Spotify and listen to this and let others know. Um, we'll also be emailing this out later today on the chamber checklist for those who did not have a chance to hear it this morning. And I also want to say um, that we will be having our first chamber after hours actually at the Silver Slipper on Thursday, May the 6th. So please save the date and mark your calendars to join us. We're actually going to be having Cinco de Mayo business after hours as a joint after hours with the Picune Chamber and the St. Tammany Parish Chamber. So please mark your calendar for that. And also on Thursday, May 13th, we will have a mid-year meeting of the Hancock Chamber and it will feature State of the County, which will also include a presentation from Bill Cotter, the new CEO of the Hancock County Port and Harbor Commission. And you know that would be my last question to you, Scotty. I mean, that's some really uh, exciting news to see Blaine coming back uh, in his new position. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on there with the Port and Harbor. Well, listen, it, it's awesome to see Blaine come back to Hancock County, you know, and, and, and have him here working with us instead of Fur River County. You know, so, and, and uh, Blaine's in, uh, I've spoken with him several times since he's been back, and he is going through the process of taking it all in right now. And um, I'm sure great things are going to be happening with him being there. And Bill Court, I mean, Bill Cotter, I apologize for that, Mr. Bill. But um, Bill Cotter <laughs> taking over as CEO is going to be a, a, a good thing. It, the man's been out there for 20, 25 plus years, I believe. And so he's, uh, Bill has a lot of knowledge of that entire area and uh and and knows what's going on and, and having him him and blaine together is going to be a wonderful team to uh, move hancock county forward and, and hopefully bring some more industry here you know and grow the port you know the port and the airport and the rail system as much as we can you know just one thing you know at, you know back to the road and bridge stuff you know i just want to share with the people that how much money you know since we uh took office in 2016 there have been, you know, we've got a lot of road and bridge stuff, you know, that are problems. And we have done over 10 bridges throughout the county and some of them within the city limits, you know, and have have five more programmed to do here, uh, hopefully this year, you know, and have spent over $8 million on, on bridge projects. We've spent over, uh, we've done over 50 miles of county roads and, and some within the cities, because I've done some myself and Blaine has as well. You know, in, in with Diamond Head and Bay St. Louis, you know, with at a, a little over three million dollars spent on that, and then state aid stuff that have been has been done throughout the county, a little about four and a half million dollars worth of state aid roads, you know, whether preservation or resurfacing, you know. So there's a lot a lot of stuff happening. You know, the people just don't really see and pay attention to, but there things are happening. You know, just just to make everybody aware. You know, that's that's some of the things that go unnoticed. And this is all attributed to our, our road manager, Vic Johnson, who has done a phenomenal job, you know, for us. So, and I hope he never retires. You know. Well, and it all, you know, adds up to Hancock County being a very envious place to live. And we're seeing that in our real estate market and uh, people are moving in here from all over the country because it is such a great place to live. And the things that you, do and the members of the Board of Supervisors and all of our elected officials do to improve the quality of life here is what helps to spur the economic activity that fuels all of our businesses. And of course, that is the mission of the Chamber to promote the social, civic, and economic well-being of Hancock County. We cannot thank you enough for taking time today to give us this update. And we look forward to seeing you at the Chamber After Hours on May 6th at the Silver Slipper. And this podcast is being brought to you today by Kenichi Engineering and Surveying in Hollywood Casino Gulf Coast. We're gonna see everybody on Thursday, May 13th for our annual meeting in State of the County. And did you have one more thing you wanted to say yeah, there? Yeah, yes, I, do. Yes. I just wanna thank our, all of our legislators this year for giving, you know, Hancock County made out overall, you know, between all three cities and the county about $12 and a half million worth of funds 
you know, whether it be bond money, go Mesa or Tidelands. So we did pretty well this year. And I'd just like to give a shout out to Representative Anderson, um, Representative McKnight, Senator Moran, and uh, Mr. Timmy Ladner. We appreciate everything you all are doing up there for Hancock County. Thank y'all. And that's what happens when everybody works together toward a common goal. So congratulations on that. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. And we will see you on May 13th and May 6th, if not before.